Uh, welcome to the January 18th, 2018 business meeting, and I'll ask the county administrator to please take the roll. Oh, good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. We have Mr. Chris Story here representing county council, and Mr. Kevin Moss here serving as your clerk of the board. I'll start with a roll with uh, Commissioner Humberston. Here. Commissioner Fisher. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Commissioner Savas. Here. Chair Bernard. Here. Please join me in Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, so first off, I think I just want to find out from the commissioners what you want to do. Uh, we talked about pulling the item uh, on the master order. Um, do you want to just keep that in a public discussion realm and uh, do the citizen communication first and that's separate? Or do you want to just do the citizen communication including that? Well, Chair, um, I, th I think that uh, due to this revelation that um, perhaps we want to ha still have the discussion because I really do want to have make one um, uh, recommendation or give staff direction to help form a task force as a result of this change. So, and I think that some of the people, I would like to hear what they have to say about that um, or whatever there's on their mind. So uh, if you want to either, however you want to proceed, if you want to move that item up. Um, oh, uh, I think we should make them sit through the lighting district. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I would suggest we move that up and then put the Absolutely. lighting one behind. Move it up. Okay, let's, let's, let's do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure that Wendy has nothing else to do. So uh, we will. We'll, we'll move up the discussion about the <coughs> uh, master order ahead of Clackamas County Service District number five. I don't think it'll take that long. So first off, we'll do citizen communication. I have uh, Les Poole and Carol Polly. Thank you for coming today. We're pretty informal here. I think she can go first. Oh, okay. Um, good morning. I'm following Paul around um, lately, it seems. We saw each other this morning at JPAC and then um, at the C4 Advisory Committee yesterday. Um, I just wanted to say thank you um, to the commission for um, the work that you're doing with the courthouse relocation um, issue that's coming up. It's good for you. Um, I'm the president of um, Downtown Oregon City Association. So that's the hat I'm wearing today. Um, and that is, it's a, it's a concern for us having the courthouse go out. It's been such a great tenant and we've been, you know, happy to have the courthouse down there. Um, and we see lots of opportunity now too. So our organization has actually um, been a finalist, a finalist for the Great American Main Street um, Award. And we will find out in March whether we win that or not. But um, we had um, your guest, we had Laurel Butnam um, yesterday or Tuesday um, at our meeting um, to talk about the courthouse relocation. So I want to thank you for that. And also a different hat. So I am a candidate for Metro District 2. And I just wanted to hear from you any um, what's going on at the county and a little bit of feedback from you and what you would like to see from Metro. And I'll be reaching out to you too later. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Les. Well done. Not that I critique the other speakers. Uh, a couple of things. One is I, I want to thank the county for responding to a question I raised a couple of weeks back. Uh, there was an article in the paper that we've had 35,000 new residents, and I asked, well, how many new jobs have we created? And it, it certainly wasn't a trick question. But, you know, as someone that's a transportation advocate and and looking at the same issues we're all facing, um, you see we've got too many people driving to work. Uh, I know folks I've, I've interviewed that drive to Tualatin and Sherwood and Hillsboro every day. One of them leaves at 5.30 in the morning. Is that a good use of our 
carbon resources, their time, and, and what does that say about us creating more jobs here? So everything we can do to create more jobs here, everything we can do to straighten out the mess that you inherited in Damascus, and, and that includes, of course, the, the concerns about, <coughs> about the traffic I keep raising, and, and certainly the concerns that um, uh, Shirley Morgan expressed last week on behalf of a lot of the citizens that are rural property owners. Um, the marijuana thing's gotten out of hand. And uh, again, I bring that up because while the revenue's great, and, and I don't think that marijuana's uh, the, the threat to us that the meth is and some of the other issues, but certainly there's a lot being sent out of state and it's illegal, and, and that's shining a bad light on Oregon and really on Clackamas County. And, and when Shirley mentioned how many applications they have for marijuana farms and some of the issues where, um, let's just say there's folks trying to make a fast buck and there's nothing wrong with trying to make a buck, but there's a point when you're starting to have a real negative influence on your neighbor's peace of mind. And uh, so I know the county's gonna continue to work on that. You were a leader in, in establishing some of the ordinances in, in a dealing with marijuana. So uh, while I'm not here to be anti-marijuana, I'm here to share a message that I'm sure you're seeing and hearing elsewhere. Um, the last thing I would say is, I think it would be great if we could have some type of a, a very, I'll use the term sincere, serious town hall on Damascus. I've spoken with Gary Schmidt and, and with some of his folks in governmental affairs. We really need to get a better picture of what's gonna happen beyond the area that Happy Valley is conveniently bringing in, uh, beyond where the sewer ends. And uh, all these issues are things we're gonna have to deal with in the next few months. These aren't gonna go away. So um, I appreciate everyone's time and consideration, and I look forward to uh, Carol responding to some of these things during her campaign, because uh, these problems aren't going away. Thank you, as always. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tony Hob Hel Helbinger, Linger, Tony. How do you pronounce that? Helbling. I don't know where the e er came from. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioners, I'm Tony Helbling. Uh, you have my address. I work for Wilson Construction, a Canby-based company. Some of you have met me before. Um, and today I'm here to speak about the extension at Aurora, the runway extension. Um, I appreciate the chance to uh, speak to you today, but also uh, I'm gonna speak with a couple of you later on today. I'd invite the rest of you to, to chat with me if you'd like to. Um, but what I wanted to do was get a few things into the record. So I took the time to come visit with you and I appreciate you letting me and I, I am aware of the shot clock. So um, there's a couple myths. Well, this is the bill. And if you haven't seen the bill, I can provide it to you. Um, the uh, couple myths, the proposed legislation circumvents the public process. I can assure you it does not. This has been a long drawn out public process to which some of you actually participated with me at the table back in 2012. This public process has gone back as far as 1976. The master plans have been there and the extension has always been approved. So to say that this is being supersited, supersited implies that something is going around those processes, that it is not open for public input. This has long been open for public input and the decisions have been made to extend the runway. Um, another myth that Aurora businesses, Aurora airport businesses use city water and sewer without paying for it. No, and I heard another uh, comment uh, uh, earlier this week when I was here. We have Marion County recorded and Oregon Health Department monitored and approved drinking water wells just like a lot of other people in Clackamas County and in Marion County do. I, at my home, have a well that I drink out of. Um, the sewer connections, there are no sewer connections to any municipalities. We have county approved septic systems, be they actually treatment plants like Columbia Helicopters just put in a state of the art system, or in, yes, we do have tanks at some of the locations up at the airport that do get pumped. This is perfectly legal and perfectly sanitary. Uh, one of the comments that was made earlier was that water is trucked to the airport, and I can explain this. Back in 
10 years ago when we put in the county, uh, the fire district required fire suppression systems, uh, we built underground tanks and the fire district uh, down there, uh, Rod Yoder's the chief, uh, they wanted to use their trucks to train, to connect to the fire department connections and draw water out of the river. So that's what they did. They trained to draw water out of the river, filled their trucks, brought them up, and then filled the tanks as part of a training thing. And they continued to do that kind of training. So yes, water was trucked to the airport to fill the fire suppression system over 10 years ago. Um, surface transportation impact studies, yes, there have been. And I can explain that more to you. But my time's up. I respect your time. I would be more than happy to meet with any of you and talk to you about these things. Thanks. Wow, that was good timing. <laughs> so I was at the table in 2012. You can go ahead and come on back up. I mean, I don't want to make this a long, drawn-out thing. Uh, it was not a public process. We received the packet the night of the meeting, and there was no discussion. The current process, we're not at the table. We're, uh, you know, when they decided to look at the Aurora Airport, they drew a circle around it, and then they took off Clackamas County, and that's who were making the decisions. Uh, our concern is it circumvents land use law. Um, that's our concern, uh, the, and we should be part of that process. Um, we happen to be strong believers in protecting uh, farmland, and it's being farmed. And, uh, and so that's our main concern. I mean, uh, we're not either supporting or opposing the expansion of the airport. We are uh, opposing the process that we're not involved in. And I know that uh, you guys aren't hooked to the sewer. You have septics, and, and I, I didn't know necessarily about a well. But anyway, so we're going to be sending a letter, uh, which is being drafted now, uh, uh, addressing our concerns. And we won't be opposing or supporting. We just want to make sure that our concerns are heard. Paul. Yeah. I don't yeah that's somewhat new to me a little bit I, I know we're drafting a letter and I don't know exactly what that's gonna look like I do I do want to just say that I've um, asked and I voiced that on Tuesday and I've I got an email back from mr. Leo so I will be meeting them next week and I want to get out to um, and see exactly the land in question here that's gonna be expanded on and how and why so I'm gonna try to hook up with mr. Helbling um, probably not this afternoon, by the way. I haven't had a chance to call you back, but uh, perhaps uh, um, later this weekend or if I can find the time. Uh, but I think it's important to really understand. I also like to talk to the sponsor of the bill and figure out what that is, and maybe maybe those questions will be asked or answered by Mr. Helbling this weekend. But I do hope to talk to um, uh, the Charbonneau folks and understand what experiences they're having today um, from the airport or negative experiences they're having try to understand that. I did have a really good conversation with the ODA on Friday, um, and I was able to, I think, clear up some of these things that have been represented in a certain way that were kind of confusing or conflicting with other things I've heard and other things I've known, as well as the a brief chat with the Wilsonville Chamber of Commerce, who seems to support the bill, but I haven't gotten into great detail as to what or why. So they are a huge economic driver. I think that's something we have to acknowledge. And I did talk to the mayor of Canby, and we saw the letter from Canby. I think they have concerns because some of the businesses that are either housed in Canby or Wilsonville have concerns. I want to get to the bottom of, not the bottom of that, but I want to find out really what employers in the Wilsonville, Canby area, that region, rely upon the airport. And if they feel that they're going to be negatively impacted or positively impacted by um, the airport expanding or staying the status quo. And I understand there's an issue about takeoffs and, and landings and so forth. And if it increases safety, and that's another thing I want to talk about, we need, we need to talk about safety because if it improves safety, then that's something we ought to at least factor. So um, I like what you said, Chair, as far as uh, not opposing or, or um, supporting. Uh, and I think neutral might be perhaps until we sort this all out, the best thing to do, but we'll talk in greater detail on Tuesday when we see a draft of the letter. Yeah, we just think there should be a committee to look into this rather than to just change the land use law like that, and that's our, our concern. Martha? 
Yeah, it's nice to see you again. I know that um, you've served on the Canby City Council for, for a while there, too. I'd just, just like to echo briefly what Paul said. I think that um, I'd like to hear what the businesses have to say. I want to talk to the French Prairie folks. Um, I want to have an idea of what the issues are. P part of the issue is that, if my understanding is that most of the property, well, all the property for the expansion is in Marion County. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. The whole airport's in the whole airport. Well, I, I know it's kind of like that that line where, really. So, so I I haven't even talked to my fellow commissioners in Marion County yet to see where where they are on this. So, yep. and remaining neutral is it sounds to me like that would be, uh, you know, that would be a better way to to go at this point. But I do want to go gather more information. Okay, yeah, just a. I think you asked me to sit here because we were going to talk. Yeah, you might. Yeah. If it's okay, there was a couple of comments you made about there was one meeting. There weren't. There were six meetings. I, no, I, I one meeting. No, one meeting. I sat at that table, went to every meeting, and right. there were and many. I of was them. with you. I was with you. I was there too. Yes, there were six, so there wasn't one meeting, and and I received my packets long time ahead for those yeah. meetings. I'm not sure if if you didn't receive your packets. No, I did not. Clackamas County did not get them until the night of the, the public hearing meetings the yes, six meetings the, we held the, yes each the night each of. night yep okay they handed um, them out i yeah you were lucky uh that you got some but they handed them out at the meeting sure okay um another comment that you made was that clackamas county didn't participate in the internet intergovernmental agreements my recollection that clackamas county and wilsonville didn't approve of the outcome of the 2012 master plan and therefore did not chose not to sign on to the intergovernmental agreement that's true okay i just want to make yeah. sure that's on the well record. actually i don't know that we were not we had a choice it wasn't our agreement it's marion county we just happen to believe that mary clackamas county residents are impacted by that airport sure. and yeah. We wanted That's to fair. voice our concerns, sure. and we were not allowed, I don't think we were asked to sign an IGA. And there are many Clackamas County uh, residents that are positively impacted sure. by that airport. Sure. So, again, thank you for your time. I way, I'm waiting okay. to get shot, but um, I invite you to speak with me later today, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks. All right, thanks. Okay, so... Now we're going to move on to uh, discussion on the library district. Uh, so I guess I should I should announce that the board will adjourn as a Clackamas County Commission and convene as the Board of County. Oh, we already are. <laughs> we haven't changed hats yet. And the uh, item that we're going to discuss is the. Uh, proposal for a board um, uh, order amending the library service district and I and if you walked in the room late we're not gonna do this right now we're gonna open for your comments our comments and we're not gonna move forward on a master order change uh, Gladstone did uh, uh, I'll read what they said. At the request of Clackamas County, the city of Gladstone has agreed to amend the settlement agreement and change the deadline for library district ma master order until November. Um, and previously it was May. So uh, we're not going to make any decisions on that today, but we're going to open up for public comment. Do you want to start first and say some things, or do you want me to... Take public comment first. Well, let me call up the folks, and I'll just make one comment while you're, um, and that is that um, we, uh, well, I, I can't say we because we all haven't talked about it. Martha's been out, and we had some discussions, but um, there's been a lot of concern about changing the master order and changing the intent um, uh, of the master order, and and concerns, and I think they're 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 valid concerns that that perhaps operations and maintenance monies that were guaranteed in the ballot measure 3-310 would somehow be compromised and I don't think that anyone on this board ever had any intention of that I know I did not uh, I can I want to say that uh, make that perfectly clear and we were trying to find a mechanism in which would actually protect that and actually is stronger make it more fortify that even more so in, in a sense that that shouldn't happen 
That's my opinion. Um, and uh, so I just want to get that on the record, and I also wanted to hopefully, as an outcome of this change, um, get together. I've met with a lot of people in the room here, uh, and perhaps um, direct staff with the support of the board to get a task force. I talked earlier with the administrator with that. I think that'd be uh, something we ought to get going as soon as possible uh, with the intention that somewhere in the near future, a few months out from now today, uh, that we come up with potentially some, some draft uh, approaches on how to tackle this problem, both with the agreement and both with the master order change that are compatible so people can see it all in one fell swoop versus seeing this parcelized with uncertainties out in the future. So I do want to hear from the public. So. Uh, I just wanted to insert that right now on the yeah, phone. The other thing is that we had scheduled a work session in the future in which we were going to allow public participation. So it probably makes sense not to do that and to have the, the task force that does that because we have lots of other things to do. Okay, so let's, oh, I, uh, we got Ken. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, my, my remarks will be brief. I want to thank the leadership of <clears throat> Oh, <laughs> Lord. The library. The city of Gladstone. Thank oh, you. I just, yeah, that's true. Synapse laps. <laughs> uh, I want to thank the, the city of Gladstone's leadership for um, uh, being flexible and allowing us this opportunity to work through these issues um, and giving us that time to bring all the players to the table uh, and get all of the concerns that people have addressed as we go forward. Um, they didn't have to do that but uh, they were um, willing to do so, and I, I think that they should be commended for that, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right, Kathleen Drain and Ben Bryant. <clears throat> Hi, thanks for coming. Just tell us uh, who you are and uh, where you live. Uh, I am Kathleen Drain. I am an unincorporated resident in the Sandy area, and I have been speaking with Mr. Savis in detail, but have also been submitting material to the commissioners, uh, trying to stress the importance that any amendment, if there is one to the master order, be as limited as possible to achieve the Oak Grove and we hope Gladstone combined libraries because that seems like a very good idea, the, that solution, but that it be done so that no other library's funds would be siphoned off for capital purposes. I think it is achievable. I am very grateful for the time that has been granted now to permit this uh, more particular attention to this issue. It was being very broadly addressed initially, but I think we can bring it back to a point where the ideals and hopes from 2008 are maintained, and finally the Oak Grove and Gladstone libraries get their new structures. Given that we're in this state of flux right now, I don't know that I need to say anything more, but if you have a question, I'm available. Okay. Well, I read your material this morning, Matt. It's an email. Yep. Uh, the o my, only, my only concern is that we can't tell city councils how to run their budgets. <laughs> That's not our... No one's asking them we to. We don't have an ability to do that. Not asking you to. The master order says that it shall be used for services. As long as the funds are used for services, everybody is in compliance. So it is really merely a matter of reviewing to see whether there has been compliance. Yeah, no one's I, asking anybody to do anything different than we had initially anticipated in 2008. And I think that spirit of 2008 is still valid and workable now, and I look forward to that being achieved. Yeah, we do have, we, at least we're pretty sure, that <laughs> some cities have used some of these monies to help supplement capital. And somehow we have to kind of clean that up. Uh, and so this would be an opportunity to do that. I'd love to have the cities present that information to us, what capital they are using, or are they going to be using it in the future? And we got to know that. 
Uh, we don't have the ability to audit them, so we're going to have to trust that they're going to, you know, supply us the information we need. Well, but you could audit them as the library district if you grant yourself that authority in the amended order. Well, we do do an uh, audit uh, uh, annually of the district. Out, uh, an outside auditor audits them. But yeah, it's the comprehensive annual financial yeah. report for the district that we, right. that we do do. And uh, it's also true, too, that, uh, you know, each and every municipality is responsible for conducting its own annual audit of its own uh, finances and producing its own comprehensive annual financial report as well. So, yeah. Yes. Which, yeah, I won't add comment to that. Okay. I will were take, some communities I'll, that didn't. <laughs> if I may take my last 50 seconds. The question of past performance by others should not be... <clears throat> conjoined necessarily at this time with simply solving the Gladstone Oak Grove issue. I agree. So I would hope that we keep the focus right now on the one issue and then look long term to the solution of the other issue. Yeah, I think in the in the task force, which I totally think is a great idea, mm -hmm. uh, we've got set some timelines on it, but um, we do have communities such as Milwaukee that has to build a new library and they're limited on who they can tax and how can we perhaps address that. But that's a the topic of discussion at another meeting. So yes, we'll definitely have that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Chair Bernard and members of the commission. I'm Ben Bryant, Assistant City Manager of Happy Valley. Um, at the risk of, of providing some comments that you just said maybe were for a better meeting, I want to provide a little bit of context. Um, and I hope you had a chance to review the letter from Mayor Chavez Dreamer. And in case not, um, I'll go over a few things. First, let me just say that the Happy Valley Library provides some of the most important services in our community, and our library director does a fantastic job in ensuring our team meets the needs of our patrons in a cost-effective manner. But operating a library is much more than buying books and um, providing programs. It's critical that we maintain a safe and welcoming building um, with also an eye on the future. Uh, undoubtedly, community growth, Technological advances will uh, necessitate changes to the building. Um, so too does proper maintenance. Uh, those take uh, considerable resources. And the challenge becomes how do we fund those um, changes and, and that maintenance. Similar to other libraries, uh, you mentioned Milwaukee, Happy Valley, the library serves a much greater uh, service area than just the city. In fact, the library service area for Happy Valley is 55,000 people only 20,000 of whom are in the city. Um, we're only able to provide service to that larger area because of the resources that we get through that larger service area and that allocation. Uh, and it's for these reasons that we're very supportive of allowing those dollars to be used for capital um, purposes. Um, you know, it'd be, it'd be uh, inequitable to solely use taxpayer dollars from that 20,000 folks for a building that serves that 50,000 population. We understand and acknowledge there are a lot of concerns um, of having a more permissive master order, and um, we welcome those conversations, and we're excited to be part of, of those future task force meetings uh, that you may have. So thank you for, for allowing us to provide that context and uh, look forward to those meetings. Great, thank you very much. I just want to, I do have a, I just want to make one comment to Mr. <coughs> Bryant, and that is, um, Happy to sit down with yourself and the mayor, whoever it may be, and explain at least the one concept, which is kind of like embedded in the agreement with Gladstone about concept B, which is really the ability, possibly through an agreement, where the county could um, write in the agreement the ability to form a capital district to do that. So you can actually get revenues from those other 30,000 people outside the city. So I would look... This is very confusing and this is very complex and I'm sure that I, we, could, we can actually craft this in a way that would actually be able to achieve uh, a library, you know, for, for, you know, for a, a town that needs one. Of course, you have a brand new library, congratulations. Um, and it's a great structure, but I think there's a mechanism there that addresses that. But there's one thing I do want to say is that um, I think we realize or the number of folks are realizing that there's very limited resources and 3-310 or the monies generated from that really aren't adequate 
typically enough to fund or and operate a library completely. Sometimes they need a little bit of augment, money's augmented from the, city, from the cities. And that was by design. It wasn't supposed to solely fund it. But it does strike fear in those libraries that are threatened currently for funding who can't even meet their operating expenses today when um, those are monies are looked at for other purposes when they're already at risk of not meeting their operating expenses today. So just, just, just it's something that we need to reconcile and find a way to achieve what, you, what the cities want to achieve in the future without threatening these limited dollars. Couldn't agree more, um, and, and we are encouraged by that. The first uh, part of your comments, um, that uh, approach of looking at how we can fund future expansion. The one, uh, I guess, unknown that we have is what is considered capital expense, right? So um, do we need to form that district for building repair and maintenance when we need to do a big roof or replacement or something like that? So I think having those conversations and defining that, what is a capital expense, um, we look forward to. I think we have a great opportunity now that we can actually talk about the agreement and the and the master order all in one, all in one, and have a, have a conversation that actually uh, achieves that clarification. Great, thank you very much, Grover. I just want to say before he, Grover says anything that you know I my first experience of mayor of Milwaukee was the budget because I think they did it quite early and the. Budget proposal was to cut library funding, and uh, huge crowds. It, <laughs> we never cut the budget, and uh, and I think that's represented here. That you know, there's great concern, <coughs> great love of the library and the importance to the community. I mean, we used to call it the living room until the farmers market came along, and then we called it the living room. But uh, uh, anyway, Grover, thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm Grover Bornefeld, and I live in unincorporated Clackamas County in the area known as Jennings Lodge. <clears throat> and um, very short history. So I was a guy who commuted a lot for work and have lived in this area for 26 years. And then I stopped commuting and got involved. And the first thing I did was get on my local CPO board, and then I got on the library board. And how hard could that be? So in July of 2015, I began to discover some of the things that were afoot. And yes, we did have an opportunity to reach out to y'all. Some of you weren't here then, but the y'all that are still here. And, uh, and, and others to create uh, a community involvement in the number of things that, that are important to us. So I really want to appreciate that in uh, March of 2016, um, this body uh, uh, took, av uh, took uh, action to uh, start to put things right. And I really want to, more than anything else, say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, and thank you for the remarkable uh, responsiveness that has occurred that is so different than the past that I knew here. And so thank you all for doing that. It is, for me, I love that you have the... Uh, the uh, performance Clackamas as a guideline, I read it practically daily, and I believe you all are quite attuned to it as well. And I, uh, there's so much opportunity, particularly given the way the rest of our world and country is looking, that we locally can do things where people work together. So thank you for doing that. The second thing I want to speak to is I really appreciate the responsiveness to give us time. I really appreciate the opportunity to have a task force of those who are interested and knowledgeable to be able to, I didn't mean to not thank you, by the way, thank you too. <laughs> I was wondering. I know you. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> um, but to be able to come together and do that because the, the settlement agreement actually represents, I'm glad it was brought up, it's nearly 50,000 people. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a large population who has a significant library need and it is underserved. Little plug. Also, have I'll see you guys tonight. Uh, we also have a park issue that's underserved as well. And but I just so appreciate the direction. So that's all I really want to do. I don't have more to talk about. Oh, I do have one more thing. So Monday night is the next library district advisory committee meeting. And um, about the tracking, I also want to really acknowledge the shift in LDAC. The first time I showed up in an LDAC meeting, it didn't look at all like three three ten said it should have. 
and it's getting it's getting working, people are getting trained up, and I'm so pleased this will be our first time to go through the draft of the new reporting document that will require each library that receives library district funds to report in a way that shows everybody in common apples to apples format where, where the money's going and how it's being used. So I think putting those two things together, um, we will be able to honor the intent of the voters, and thank you for your time. Great, thank you. I think one thing that we ought to consider in the task force is moving around the county yeah, a little bit. Because we have folks in Sandy who have to come down here. And, you know, it would be great if maybe we did it at the libraries. <laughs> you know, it makes sense. <laughs> Just to uh, move around the county so, because uh, we, we don't necessarily have to film this. So I uh, think we could move around the county and get a lot of, uh, a good opportunity to see how libraries are being run around the county and then uh, uh, have those meetings there so people can share in the burden of driving, just so it's not in downtown Portland. Yeah, right? thank you. Oh, uh, that's not a bad idea. I didn't, I didn't really think of that, so I appreciate that. I'm and, uh, and to tag that with, uh, with what uh, Mr. Bornefeld had just mentioned, uh, uh, I think that I might give an opportunity for every city uh, to um, bring forth and talk about their budgetary constraints or opportunities and so forth so we can all learn more about that and make sure that we're being sensitive to the needs of the cities and the constituents and come up with a solution. Um, and I think the Milwaukee example is a good one. Um, Milwaukee will put a ballot measure out there uh, to, to pass funds for to fund their library expansion and they and they serve an area greater than the size of their city similar to what Mr. Bryant was speaking to but they couldn't get the means to get the funding from that that area this capital district which is really the Estacada model uh, this capital district option of being uh, there would would actually serve that purpose and give assurances um, that in the future when those needs arise um, if there's doubt about that or maybe maybe uh, re-roofing the library is a eligible use of operations maintenance money because maintenance is maintenance and re-roofing is re-roofing but if maybe it exceeds the amount or the ability for the city to actually do that and so there's still a means uh, by by which this capital district could make some of those capital improvements and not not leverage or harm those funds uh, that we so cherish for operations and maintenance great any other discussion on this item oh uh, Ken and uh, Council, Ken first. Um, <clears throat> from what I've heard from folks, from my colleagues, from e emails that I've received, I sort of distilled it down to three basic principles. I'm sure there are other related principles involved in this, but as, as the task force goes forward, I see three basic objectives here that we want to accomplish. One is clearly <clears throat> the libraries are concerned about lo any loss of operating revenue and we want to make certain that they are kept whole with respect to operating revenue. Secondly, there's clearly the principle that cities have a right to operate uh, <clears throat> their budgets and deal with capital issues uh, without our interference. <clears throat> so that principle, I think, is a principle that needs to be <coughs> adhered to in this process. And then the last is we all have this objective of building two new libraries, and let's not lose sight of that fact. We have underserved areas. Um, and it's about time, both in library services as well as park services, quite frankly, <coughs> it's about time uh, we stepped up and, and saw that, that, that those underserved areas got better service. So if we can follow those three basic principles, uh, as we have the negotiations on the task force, I think we can accomplish this. And again, I thank um, <coughs> the, city <laughs> the city of Gladstone uh, for giving us the time to work this through. Thank you. Chris. I just don't know what it is about that term. <laughs> Commissioners, I, hearing your conversation and deliberations, I just wanted to offer some procedural uh, notices to you. One, just to remind you, you are sitting as the board of the library district. Uh, so the, you had an item before you. I would suggest that you would vote to table it. It sounds like your interest is uh, accepting the offer that uh, Mr. Krupp uh, wisely solicited from the city of Gladstone. They have expressed an interest in amending <coughs> the settlement agreement, which sets forth the timeline. I did want to identify to you that that's a concept. You will actually see a draft 
and then have to take action at a business meeting to formally amend that settlement agreement before those terms are official, but it sounds like there's an intention of the parties towards that approach of allowing more time. Uh, so the action today would be a table. You will see a subsequent action later to amend the settlement agreement. And as we talk through the task force and your con concepts, I will note from a legal perspective as we shift the settlement agreement, the necessity of the master order going before the IGA could drop and you can have those conversations simultaneously such that both documents could be made to uh, be negotiated or discussed simultaneously such that they will look <coughs> the same and be in harmony when action is finally agreed to and, and taken. Okay. So on that, on that, I move that we table the board order amending the library district master order. Second. Been moved and seconded, Martha. Uh, yeah, just, I just want to just say a few words because I worked with George Hoyt back on this issue in 2008 and we worked very hard to get this passed. And uh, I'm here today because um, I was uh, a young mother in Canby and the library was inadequate. It was in the basement of a retail building. And I felt very strongly that I wanted my children to have a larger public space where the space for the programming was available, where the space for the different media that, that we use was there. And so that's actually how, why I'm a commissioner today, really, was to start with libraries. So I, my message to folks is this. It was 2008 when this was passed. We need to re-look at this. We need to be flexible as we move forward with this because the eye on the prize is service delivery to uh, <coughs> folks within cities as well as the unincorporated areas. Just constantly keep that in mind because one of the things that I remembered when I first got started, it really wasn't the fact that we didn't have the services or the programming. We actually didn't have the space. So it's kind of a chicken and egg kind of scenario here that we're dealing with. So we passed it in 2008, and I will give George full kudos for that because you were the one that managed the campaign with Jan, remember? Um, and it was a phenomenal effort after multiple tries to try and find a solution in library services in this county. Since before, in the, in the 1980s, I remember working on this issue, for example, as a young mother. So I hope the task force remains flexible. Please keep the eye on the prize that it, it, it is not just about operations. That's an important piece of it. But libraries also are the heart of the community. And uh, I believe that they should be the most beautiful structures that any community has because it's a space where people come to meet, to read, to access information. It is the bedrock, I've said this many times before, of democracy in this country where anyone can get any piece of information they want. And Andrew Carnegie, as you know, who was the, uh, I think it was a steel, I think I've talked about him before, made it his life's work as, uh, as someone who made quite a bit of money because he felt that he had gotten his start by having free and open access to libraries. And he wanted to make sure that this opportunity was actually provided across the United States of America. And I see Carol nodding her head because you will see a Carnegie Library here in Oregon City that was just expanded. So I'm just going to ask people, don't get, let's not get so worried about operations versus structure. Let's just figure it out. And we are going to have to work with our cities, the unincorporated areas. We have 16 cities in this county, and we're going to have to somehow bring them into the fold, and we're going to have to continue to pressure them to really hold up an end of the bargain where they also contribute to the library system not only for the welfare in their citizens, but for all of you folks in the unincorporated areas. So this is just a value statement for me. Um, I look forward to the work, and um, I'm sure with the intelligence and integrity that we have in this room that we'll figure it out. Great. All right. With that, uh, 
<coughs> oh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion, uh, this issue is tabled for further discussion. All right, thank you very much. And I hope you'll stay for the Wendy, uh, I gotta get the, the lighting right. district? The lighting Morel district. Morel show. <laughs> the most uh, illuminating part of the show. Yes. Oh. 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 And uh, <laughs> first bad. I wanna announce that we will uh, recess as a Board of County Commissioners and convene as the Clackamas County Service District number five for the next item. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, we have Wendy Coriel, who's the manager of uh, our service district number five, uh, our street lighting service district, and she's here to present to you uh, nine uh, assessment uh, area formations to go through, and my understanding is, is we'll, we'll be able to handle these all in one motion, is what I understand as well, so we'll go through the presentation. I'm, I'm tempted to sort of sing a tune about the midnight special shining an ever love light on me oh, yeah, yeah i know you're I tempted but don't <laughs> good morning commissioners good day joe it's usually on the screen okay i'm wendy coriel representing clackamas county service district number five which is the agency responsible for street lighting in the unincorporated areas of clackamas county and the city of happy valley uh, street lighting is required as conditions of approval through um, residential, commercial, industrial, multifamily developments and within the urban county of Clackamas County and City of Happy Valley. Um, street lighting can also be installed through those areas um, through the district's petitioning process. Today we have, oh, back to that. We have nine areas before you. Four are in the unincorporated areas of Clackamas County and five are in the City of Happy Valley. The first area for your consideration is area 24-15. This is a 17 lot subdivision on Highway 224. Um, we'll be installing shoebox lights and poles. This will come at a rate H at $91.88 per tax lot each year. The next three items for your consideration are 21-16. This is a three lot partition on Eidelman Road. 40-16, um, this is Pleasant Valley Villages Phase 1. 119 lot subdivision and then 54-16 which is also Pleasant Valley Villages but phase two this is 898 lot subdivision and um, we'll be installing Westbrook lights and poles and um, this will come at rate W at $245 per tax lot each year these are all in Happy Valley is this built yet not yet 800 units yes, wow. flatted a lot of a lot of lots and a lot of of construction going on in the district. <laughs> okay, this next area is area 10-17. It's a three lot partition and this is on Hill Road. Um, we'll have Cobra lights added to existing wood poles and this will come under rate B for $50.01 per tax lot each year. Next area is area 53-17. It's a seven, seven lot subdivision on Southeast Rupert Drive. Um, this will have Cobra lights on fiberglass poles. These will come into rate C at $70.12 per tax lot each year. And then the last areas for your consideration, these three areas are 20-16, and this is in addition to an existing funeral home for guests how many funeral home. 35-16, um, this is a 16,000 square foot light industrial building. Um, on 82nd Drive, and then 18-17, um, the Clackamas Fire District will be building one new building and remodeling a second building. Um, we'll be doing Cobra lights on fiberglass for these projects, and these will come under rate D, and that's at $1.25 per frontage foot per tax lot each year. And there are no remonstrances received on any of these projects, mm -hmm. and that concludes my presentation. Are all these lights LED? Um, the majority of them are. Um, not all lights in the district are capable of um, going LED, but any Cobra and Westbrook style lights currently in the district, along with brand new Acorn style, um, are LED compatible. Okay. And all new installations are going LED for those styles of lights. Any commissioners have a clarifying questions? Um, I'll open up public hearing and ask if anyone wishes to testify on this matter. Oh, here we go. Les, you have 
You know, I felt that An hour. it was my <laughs> civic duty. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Wendy doesn't get a lot of uh, public testimony. <clears throat> I apologize, my throat's a little weak from not feeling well, but um, obviously I approve of this. Uh, at $92 a year, they take care of it when the light burns out. You don't have to climb the pole and replace the light in front of your house. Um, I just want to say a couple things. One is, it makes common sense that we have street lighting required in, in new construction, new subdivisions. And recently, through a lot of hard work by citizens and by the county, um, we've seen the street lights uh, going in on McLaughlin, the street light program. Uh, I'm a big advocate for street lights. And sometime in the future, um, when Wendy's not busy doing everything else she's doing, It'd be great to have her do just a quick presentation because in the existing neighborhoods, um, there's a way to get there. And every time I drive down Oatfield Road in the dark, I get to Jennings and there's street lights on Oatfield. Between Jennings and north of the, or south of there at the Gladstone line where Jennings makes a big turn, um, there's absolutely no lighting. And I'm not, I'm getting a little bit in the weeds here, but it would be great for the public to understand the other side of what you do, which is how do we get lighting and safety everywhere? Because um, without it, just next time it powers out at night, go outside, take a look around, <coughs> you'll suddenly have a great appreciation for the street lighting district. So I'm certainly for this, and thanks for your time. Well, thanks. I live in a rural community. I very much appreciate the fact that there aren't lights. You uh, need both. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the one, w one thing is, is that if, if I live in a neighborhood and I want lights and everyone agrees to them, they can get them, right? That is correct, through the district's petitioning process and all they have to do is contact me and we'll analyze the area and see if it qualifies for a petition. Yeah, well, great. Well, with that, we'll close the public portion and entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the items one through nine under service district number five board orders. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next, oh, we will now reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners uh, for the remainder of the meeting. The next item is the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On today's consent agenda under Health, Housing, and Human Services, we have approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the Housing and Community Development Division and the Colton Water District for the Virgil Road Waterline Project in Colton. Uh, we have approval of agreement number 17-18530 with Ride Connection to provide funding for rides provided by members of the Clackamas County Transportation Consortium. Approval of an agency service contract with Clackamas County Children's Commission for Kindergarten Partnership Innovation Services. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas Education Service District for Focused Child Care Networks. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas Education Service District for Kindergarten Partnership and Innovation Services. Approval of an agency service contract with Metropolitan Family Service for Family Resource Coordination. Approval of an agency service contract with Metropolitan Family Services for Kindergarten Partnership Innovation Services. Approval of an agency service contract with Northwest Family Services for Family Resource Coordination. Approval of an agency service contract with Totos Hutos for Family Resource Coordination. Approval of an agency service contract with Toto Hutos for Kindergarten Partnership Innovation Services. Approval of amendment number two to the Professional Technical and Personal Service Agreement with the Living Room for Youth, Young, Adult, Peer Support Services. Approval of amendment number two to the Professional Technical and Personal Service Agreement with Stay Clean for Peer Support Services. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Washington County for Public Health Modernization with the Communicable Disease Program. Approval of personal professional services contract with Folk Time Inc. for peer support services at the Riverstone Crisis Clinic for the Safety Net Program. Under our Department of Transportation Development, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas River Water for the use of a temporary construction easement related to the Clackamas River Bridge construction project. <laughs> Under elected officials, approval of previous business meeting minutes, approval of a resolution appointed justices of the peace pro tem for Clackamas County Justice of the Peace District, 
under technology services approval of an amendment to the service level agreement between Clackamas Broadband Exchange and the State of Oregon for fiber lateral and under County Council authorization to enter into a contingent fee contract with Demore Law Group, Whaley Law Group and the Law Office of Thomas L. Young to evaluate and initiate opioids litigation and that concludes today's consent agenda. I think we should take each one of these items individually. <laughs> That was a good job. Uh, yeah. Did you even breathe? Uh, what? Smidge in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, any commissioners wish to remove, pull an item from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, yeah. Wait, I, just I move something. to approve the consent agenda. Oh. Wait. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's, is there a second? Second. We moved in second to approve the consent agenda and Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, I just wanted to mention there are many, we heard Kevin read through the list, there are many items on this consent agenda focusing on children, readiness for school, early childhood, and I just couldn't miss the opportunity to just uh, recognize how incredibly important this is for our community. And so thankful that we have such good staff and implementing these programs and working for the, what really matters is the future generations. And we do a lot. And we don't talk a lot about that in our public hearings. We don't have people coming on citizen communication to mention it. It's on a consent agenda. Kevin did a great job reading it, but very, very important services. So that's all I wanted to say. Great. Appreciate that. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Now we have county administrator updates. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a couple of items. <clears throat> the first I uh, want to relay to you information about our Water Environment Services Department. They've been awarded the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award by the Government Finance Officers Association. This is a nonprofit uh, organization that represents some 19,000 governmental officials and financial practitioners. Uh, the award represents a significant achievement for WES as it reflects their continuing commitment to meeting the highest principles of government budgeting. And uh, Water Environment Services satisfied what are nationally recognized guidelines for an effective budget presentation uh, to earn this award. And I just wanted to give kudos to the great staff over there at Water Environment Services for the outstanding work they do. <clears throat> the second item I have uh, involves uh, our resource conservation and solid waste program. We've got some great uh, 2017 year-end uh, uh, numbers. Last year, our event coordinators throughout the county, we uh, borrowed a, a whole host more of our recycling uh, containers uh, for the program than we ever have before. And in total, we had some 1,006 recycling containers that were placed across 89 events that included things like the county fair, the Pickathon Music Festival, and a number of other uh, farmers markets alongside garbage containers. And borrowing the uh, recycling containers really did a great job in helping to reduce waste and to redeem beverage deposits to fund similar activities uh, from the department. So a uh, great job to our staff in resource conservation and solid waste. And that's my report. Great. Thank you very much, Commissioner Schrader. Well, wow, actually I have a lot to report. I was glad that uh, Commissioner Fisher mentioned uh, children and families today because this morning at our Clackamas Workforce Partnership meeting, uh, we had a presentation about building healthier families while, while building a healthier economy. So our workforce board, Clackamas Workforce Partnership, collaborates with Head Start, Early Head Start and Healthy Families which are programs here of the Clackamas County um, Children's Commission. And basically what it does is reach out to low-income parents who's with, who are working, whose children are in these programs, to also get them into um, services and opportunities for training or education. So the community college in Clackamas helps them, development, helps them develop training plans that will lead to employment in high demand fields and connects participants to the support they need, which includes childcare. And the reason why this is important is because what we found out was when parents are needing these services for their children, oftentimes, you know, they're working in jobs or they're underemployed that 
they need that kind of help up to get them better connected so they can uh, actually prosper. And one of the unique things that they do once a month, the cohorts of these working parents actually get together uh, with an employment support group meeting at the college. And uh, this is really, uh, you know, a result of uh, a grant actually that Clackamas Workforce Partnership got from CARE Oregon uh, with $94,000. Uh, $94,000 and it covers child care while the job smart participants go to work school and uh, required meetings and so I have a pamphlet here and uh, there's an I'll send it pass it off to, you know pass it down to my colleagues and there's a number of stories of folks who have actually uh, benefited already from these collaborations so very cool we're really working on it let me pass it this way um, the other thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was tourism because I had an opportunity to travel over Christmas and New Year's and I brought this back and I'm hopeful our tourism development agency will give me uh, a little bit of time to talk about what, uh, what this uh, model is. It was absolutely fantastic. It's really a family-based model at chalets throughout Europe run by uh, Esprit, number one for family skiing. And what's nice about it is the children get daycare, they get skiing lessons, uh, they have communal meals with all the families. It was one of the best experiences I've had uh, going someplace else. And um, it's an amazing model that I, I really would like to see the Mount Hood territory, see if we can't somehow duplicate it because it was just a fantastic, uh, fantastic way to watch my grandchildren learn how to ski. Uh, since I will be nothing else but uh, but a beginner. And um, uh, the mountains there were gorgeous, obviously, but I uh, am biased towards the Mount Hood territory and Mount Hood, so I'd like to see us. So I'm going to pass this to my colleagues as well. Uh, really interesting. Um, other than that, Ken and I, uh, Commissioner Humberson and I, met with the Secretary of State, Dennis Richardson, yesterday uh, because we're, we're working on uh, continuing those relationships with China for a trade mission again. And I think we're getting word that Guanyin County is, is, seems pretty interested in uh, opening a restaurant out here in Clackamas County. So we're actually hopefully going to be bring some actual business in here. And I'll let Ken, I'll let you expound on that a little bit more uh, when, it's, uh, when it's your time up. And finally, arts and culture activities in the county. Mary's Woods, 2018 Music in the Woods, A Mighty Wind. Music for every wind instrument in the orchestra, solo duet, five at a time. You name it, including the splendid sextet of Francis Pul Pulnock. The Chameleon Winds, led by flautist Abby Ma Madges. You'll be blown away. January 21st, 2 p.m., Chapel of the Holy Name, Mary's Woods Provincial House. Grand opening of life and death in the Oregon Territory. <laughs> Coinciding with the 175th anniversary of the Oregon Trail migration, this January, <coughs> the Museum of the Oregon Territory is unveiling its new exhibit, Life and Death in the Oregon Territory, <coughs> following Oregonians from the cradle to the grave. On Saturday for the grand opening, attendees received free admission, drinks, and refreshments. That will be Saturday, January 20th, uh, regular hours uh, at 1 p.m. and regular hours Wednesdays through Saturdays, 10.30 to 4.30 at the Museum of the Oregon Territory. And if you want more uh, information about the arts, go to clackmasartsalliance.org. Okay. Oh, uh, excuse me, Commissioner Savas. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, you know, whether it was this morning, uh, the crowd we had this morning over some issues or whether um, it is things that are going on in people's neighborhoods and all the vast array of the services and things that we get ourselves involved in. Um, someone asked me, well, how was your weekend the other day? I said, well, actually, I spent uh, the holiday weekend uh, on either face-to-face -face meetings or talking to folks about the issues that were all library stuff, Laughlin stuff. Uh, <laughs> And I was on the phone last night. I got the phone at about 10, 15, 10, 30 last night. I got off the phone, and I realized that my wife, I never really saw my wife last night, but I know that she went to bed. <laughs> and and I, I, I should be able to see her tonight after the NCPRD meeting, I, I think. But the point of the matter is I realized that, and yesterday's fair board meeting was no exception, that 
you know, there is someone on the other end of the phone, and they're volunteering their time as well. And I just want, I've said this before, but I, it just always strikes me how passionate our citizens are and our volunteers are about things that are important about their community. And it's really, frankly, at the core of it, it's really about making our community better. And I, and I just feel, you know, so honored, actually, to have to be in the position to be able to help. And that's, I guess, the reward, one of the rewards of being uh, a county commissioner. And, and I guess, again, um, the point of the matter is, is that they care. And then you saw today, they care. And it doesn't matter what the issue is. And that's, that's really great. It just makes our community stronger. I just, just want to acknowledge them. And, of course, I always make a plug for search and rescue folks that are um, making that effort. And really, at, the, at sometimes at the most difficult times of weather, when the weather's the worst or it's a holiday season, uh, they're making substantial sacrifices. So I'm hoping that we can also in the future <coughs> do something to, to help them uh, with some facilities, uh, however that is. But um, just a big thank you to all our volunteers. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Fisher. Thank you. I've been thinking a lot about health, healthy families, healthy kids, a growing economy, the intersection of both. Today is the last day to get your ballot in by mail for Measure 101, and I don't know how that's going to come out at the ballot box. I think it's important that people vote, that they weigh in on it. I do know that one in four Oregonians receive Medicaid, and if this does not pass, it's going to be an incredible challenge for our legislature. I bring this up because we are the county right. government. We are the last stop. We are <coughs> the entity that deals with the problems that really nobody else wants to deal with. We are the last stop. And I want us to be thinking about the importance of our residents. I want us to think about what it means if you don't have health care. We now have 95% of our residents have health care. If the legislature doesn't figure this out, we are going to be struggling. Our residents are going to be struggling. I think part of the reason why our economy is growing so well is that so many of our residents are covered with health care, and we don't, they don't have that worry. So very concerned about that, and on the lines of that, because we have this vote that's coming up, it's January 23rd, today's the last day to mail, you can always drop off your ballots. But the other piece is we've been dealing a lot with what is the will of the voters. We have it with the library issue for the measure that was passed in 2008. We're dealing with our policy session yesterday with what did the voters intend for the Tourism Council, and what is the authority of uh, county government relationship to the Tourism Council. And so I just want to say what the voters tell us, how they inform us is very, very important. Get out and vote. Don't let that <coughs> ballot sit there on your, on your, uh, <coughs> it's on you, your kitchen counter. Get it in, either deliver it to a lot of libraries, have drop off sites, deliver it or put it in the mail today. So that's my message. Great. Commissioner Humberston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's, been a busy, busy week. Uh, I met actually last week with the Hoodland, Hoodland Women's Club regarding their, their efforts to form a uh, parks district in the Hoodland area. They are working on that, and um, we were able to give them some assistance and some guidance on how that process will go forward. Um, they're probably going to try and put it on a ballot um, in uh, 20, November of 2020. Um, it could be sooner than that, but I think that's going to be their target date. And if they're successful in establishing the district and a, and a rate of, of, of um, taxation to fund the district, um, there'll be properties that uh, we will be transferring to them, such as the Old Dorman property, uh, among others, for them to establish a local park. Um, <clears throat> I've attended a couple of uh, Senator Wyden's town halls. I have to say, it's one of the better town halls I've been to because he doesn't just spend 45 minutes speaking and then leave and take 10 minutes worth of questions, maybe. He spends his time answering questions. He gives a very brief start, and then he answers questions from the audience. Um, I think that's a, gr a great process. Um, people really get an opportunity to ask the questions that are important to them, of, uh, to their senator. Um, we recently, yesterday, had our fair board retreat. Um, I was really pleased with the outcome of that. I think we made a lot of progress in resolving some of the past issues with the fair board. Uh, clearly, they are moving ahead uh, with their master plan and business plan. Um, <clears throat> I think 
we're doing a good job of recognizing what they need to do and, and, and the volunteer efforts that they make, and they're doing a good job of recognizing the concerns that we have regarding our capital investment in, in the fair uh, facilities. Um, and I think that that bodes well for how we go forward together. They will be having a similar mediation with their uh, rodeo board as they have some issues between those two boards. And um, I have asked both of the presidents to put, put that together, and they'll be working with our mediation services to do exactly the same thing and, and work out their issues. <clears throat> um, last night, I attended the Western uh, Economic Alliance meeting uh, over in um, uh, Lake Oswego. Interesting to hear the legislators' perspectives on some of the issues coming up in the state. And then I went to a CCA meeting, of all places, at uh, High Rocks Cafe, where there was a presentation by PGE <coughs> on their efforts of, of fish preservation and um, uh, increasing the, the, the flow of, of fish stock in the Clackamas River. And they've made a lot of progress with their new technologies and whatnot C like that. CCA? So a, Can CCA? CCA? Um, Citizens informed and aware. No, it's no, no, no. that's the CIA. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what the acronym stands for, but it basically is the Steelhead folks. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. so and they, and they've worked with PGE on some of the new technologies that they're using to to increase the fish uh, flow in the Clackamas River and. Uh, it looks like those efforts are paying off because all of a sudden they're seeing a real spike in the increase of adults returning to spawn. In fact, areas where for 90 years there have been no Chinook, all of a sudden they're getting Chinook salmon spawning. Chinook. Yay. Chinook. So, Chinook. Chinook. So that's, that's, that's some progress on that front. And um, um, on January 27th, 28th, the Collector's West Gun and Knife Show will be at the fairgrounds for those who are interested in that. And for those who would like to keep track of what goes on at the event center in Canby, you can go to www.clackamas.us slash fair. And they retain a, uh, a list of all of the different events that, that uh, are going on all year long. Uh, if nothing else, if you don't remember that, just go and Google Clackamas County Event Center and that will get you there. So you can find out what goes on on a regular basis. <coughs> and finally, the dog. So this is Clementine. He is an energetic and bold 15-year-old lab mix who is looking for a forever friend to fill his days with love and adventure. He loves getting petted and going for walks even though he needs to work on his leash skills. While he may not like every dog, he might like to meet one you bring to the shelter for introductions. Come here and spend some time getting to know him. He does not like to share his food, so he'll need an adult-only home. If you are looking for a good companion, please go and visit Clementine today. For more information about Clementine and other adoptable dogs, please contact Clackamas County Dog Services at 503-655-8628 or www.clackamas.us forward slash dogs. I'm confused why he needs an adult home, because he doesn't like to share his food. Oh, he's, they're afraid that the children might eat the dog food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, they're afraid, like, That's like, all my, I can figure. like my lab, is they follow the kids around snatching food. <laughs> That's, That's all I can figure. That's what's going on. <laughs> I just read this script. I don't write it. <laughs> um, so I think that uh, we should call you the mountain man. You, you, you spend a lot of time up at the mountain. You know, we used to divide the county. We tried this for a while. I thought it was fairly successful. We divided the county into five sections, and we all took a section, and then we rotated, or we at some point attempted to rotate. I don't know that we actually did rotate. I know I had the mountain one for yeah, yeah, we, 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 a yeah, we few times. We rotated. I, yeah. uh, we actually got a pretty good reception from that. And yeah. um, it, it, I think it was uh, the previous commission uh, didn't seem to have much interest in doing that. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. Um, I spent most of my time at the mountain. I had all that mm -hmm. area up there. But speaking of the mountain and the brochure you yeah. handed out, you know, we have an outstanding asset that is totally underutilized. I mean, you go anywhere in the country where they have a mountain like we have, and it's underutilized. One of the things that uh, is taking place is an exchange. Uh, 
Finally. Mount Meadows does not have the ability to build housing. Uh, they're exchanging a portion of, I think it's called cloud cap, uh, for a piece of uh, real estate in, in uh, government camp, which will allow some redevelopment. But it's also an opportunity to look at connecting the various uh, assets, uh, government camp, uh, Mount, uh, Timberline, uh, Mount Hood Meadows together and recreating uh, a redevelopment of a, a great asset that is so underutilized that might require a tram uh, that would uh, connect them all. But one of the, uh, so uh, that's really exciting. I think that, uh, um, you know, there's a great opportunity, many communities are doing that, but the also another issue is the lack of workforce housing. I talked to the, uh, the person, uh, Mount Hood Meadows uh, folks about uh, workforce housing up on the mountain. A lot of, uh, there's actually people camping in the woods around up there. Some living in their cars, some in tents, um, and, and some, uh, you know, just have no place else to go unless they drive to Portland and uh, that contributes to traffic issues and the impact on our roads. So I, they're interested in talking about workforce housing and uh, I think that's something we need to do. Um, we also, of course, had our meeting with some people have mentioned with the Fair Board. I, I thought it was very productive. And uh, we also uh, had a meeting with tourism, and uh, we got a, a ways to go on that one. Um, but it was it was a I, it was a pretty one-sided conversation if you think about it. We we uh, had the tourism folks sitting in the audience, and our lawyers talking to us when actually tourism paid half. Why weren't they at the table? But they I think we're going to agree to. Uh, Something we, similar to what we did with the fair board. We need to do a retreat. Yeah, do a retreat, retreat and sit and down and just uh, work it out. Uh, work it out. Uh, but we also uh, need to talk a little bit more. I'm going to meet. I've ac actually I'm requesting to meet with uh, members of uh, the tourism and uh, to talk about what's the best approach. Do we want to? Uh, uh, look at a Berman come bringing him back or do we want to look at an outside council or do we want to just try the the, uh, the the retreat and in what what order or any order yeah. so uh, I want to find that out because uh, there's some budgetary issues on a couple of them and uh, we just need to work all that out. But I think that we got to remember that there are partners, and like you said, they're volunteers, just like mm. all our other committees. But one, I want one really important thing. I mean, if you look at that brochure, yeah. and you think about uh, tourism revenues have tripled, right? And there are no new assets. That means there are no new hotels. There's no new. Uh, resorts. So uh, part of that's collection. I think the county's stepping up in the collection of those uh, resources. The other is that um, we're collecting uh, um, taxes for, uh, well, Airbnb, we're trying, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't actually allow them in county code. So we need to address that issue. Yeah. And, you know, the problem is Mike's very busy. And uh, maybe we talk to tourism about hiring an outside expert to move that forward. I don't know. But those are the things that we need to talk about. There's a lot of revenue out there uh, which could help grow this great resource we have that we're not collecting, yeah, and that we actually don't allow. So it's a problem. And Chair, can I make, I don't want to, want to make one last comment. When you look at that, the most remarkable thing is, as you mentioned, Every area is connected. You can literally get on a gondola and go from one mountain to another to another. And we have an opportunity at Mount Hood, if we can get our ski operators on the same page with one pass, you could literally, you know, 
the, the niche that is there is, um, I think, underutilized at this right. point, especially kind of a, after seeing it's that. It's kind of a long way, though, from Mount Hood to the sisters, don't you think? Well, <laughs> I'm talking about Mount Hood to Meadows <laughs> to know. Kirk Hanna, to, to yeah. all, the, all the players there. Uh, you know, the rising tide will raise all boats if they can come to some agreement about how each niche there is important. They are yeah. actually sharing in the funding of that bus that's moving. That's good. And so that that's great. And it's the, you know, it's really picked up. A yeah. lot of people are using them. It's really cheap, especially Mount Hood Meadows, who has, well, I shouldn't say it. Timberline Mount Hood Meadows have very limited parking. And so the partnership makes perfect sense. And, and they are working on that. And when that uh, property exchange is completed, you know, you're going to have Mount Hood Meadows in government camp. Yeah. It's a great opportunity to look at a tram, and I think the county should pay for it. I was just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, can, we can help facilitate. Yeah, we can help facilitate the discussion and work on the land use opportunities that provide, because it's a... It's a beautiful area we need to protect, but we also should utilize that asset uh, for the benefit of uh, Clackamas County. Look, everybody else in the state uses Mount Hood uh, on their brochures and everything. Um, and uh, some, some probably have Mount Hood tattoos, but uh, we should utilize it as much as they are. Well, with that... Uh, We'll adjourn today's meeting, and we do have a library district board meeting, no, no, Parks District Board meeting tonight out at the training center, so we'll see you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.